I'm Debbie. Welcome to Grandma's World. Um, it's been an absolutely beautiful week here this week. Um, I am feeling a lot better, a lot uh, more squared away emotionally, and um, a lot more, I have a lot more positive energy than I've had for the last couple of weeks. So that's good news for me. Uh, to be, it's good for me to be able to say that. I um, have not done much stitching, as much stitching as I had hoped to for the last couple of weeks, mostly because my energy has been focused on completing some of the house projects that are going on, in, in, not only in my house, but in my garden. I'm having so much fun. I don't know if you can see how tan I'm getting because I'll go out, like this morning I said, I'll, the marine layer was here. So it's very cool when the fog is in and the sun is blocked, it's a very cool time, not cool and hip, but just cool temperature wise to be work in the, uh, working in the yard. So I went out at about 7.30, figuring I'd stay about an hour that usually by 8.30 that marine layer is burning off and it did. Um, and I came in when, this, when the sun had been up for a little while or had the marine layer had burned off for a few minutes. And I went um, into the house and it was almost 11 o'clock. So I've decided that my front garden is a time portal and that when I walk into it, I get transported to a different dimension <laughs> and I come back three or four hours later feeling like I've only been gone a few minutes. Um, what is it? Mikai Csikszentmihalyi, who wrote the book Flow. That's what he calls flow. When you get into something, and you completely lose track of time. You're so involved in it and having really a joyful experience in it that you completely lose track of time and that's me in the garden. And things are looking um, hopeful in the garden. It's my vision is coming true and that's a nice feeling to see that happen. Um, all of that, by the way, I'm gonna um, put, I think I explained last time that I have different playlists in Grandma's World, the Grandma's World channel. And when I finish this floss tube, which I think is number 16, um, I'll edit it and then I'm going to edit something for my Disney um, playlist and something for my um, inside the house projects that I'm doing Pro a progress report on that and then another one for what's going on in the garden. So those are those are different playlists that I have where I'm trying to document what's going on in my life. Um, I'm trying to keep floss tube on things related to floss, um, although I have been working on um, some quilts as well and I'll put those in the fiber and floss. I think I'm going to rename that that um, playlist something else. Um, but I'll refer to that in a few minutes. For now, we'll just stick to the floss tube protocol, to the outline that, that seems to be set in the community. And I will say that I have no finishes for this last period of time. I do have progress that I've made. I got um, some progress done on the shores of Hawk Run Hollow. I finished, I don't remember where I was last time, um, but the ocean is finished down here, down here. And this is interesting to me because that, it looks variegated to me, but it's all off the same skein of DMC solid floss, 927. Um, and so it's really fascinating to me that it, it appears to be variegated and I love the way it looks. Um, but it is not a variegated thread. I finished the writing, the um, actual text, although I haven't finished, filled in this little box yet um, because it's supposed to use one of the colors for the, from the sun. I don't have her pattern here, her picture. Um, and I'm messing with that a little bit um, and I'm trying some different colors. I like a lot of saturation in the color um, and so I keep messing with the colors like these reds I don't think are the called for reds um, and some of the rocks I've changed 
this is was supposed these were supposed to be black and instead I wanted the variegation used a color called swamp water in here and then um, now I'm I'm messing around with the sun I don't want it to be exactly the way she charted it so I'm experimenting with it a little bit I think what I'm gonna what I've what I've done is used this color this yellow um, seven I don't remember the color of it I want to say 727 747 I believe here this should be the lighter color of the two and I am leaning toward this one this is a gentle arts color called orange marmalade for the rest of the Sun um, so the bulk of the Sun will be this yellow which is a darker yellow than either of the two yellows that were charted for this I'm leaving the face off I also want to leave the outlines off of this and to pull that off there has to be a nice big contrast between the body of the Sun and the rays that are the darker color around it so like I said I'm leaning toward this orange marmalade um, which looks darker on the camera than it is in person <laughs> um, so I can't really um, declare it fin any kind of a finish or anything it's just in progress and I'm still playing with that I really do love working on this one I really do it's it's I don't know maybe it's just the memories that it brings back or something but I really do enjoy it and then the only other thing I'm working on right now is the piece I do when I go to visit my mom and this is by the bay Santa at the seashore for Jolly July focus And I think I've mentioned before that um, Donna of By the Bay is in York, Maine. And I've been to York and I've been to its neighboring town of Ogunquit. And the little lighthouse that she puts into her pieces is the Nubble Lighthouse. And I've been around that in a boat. I've seen that. Um, and I just love her, her work and I love the, rem the memories that it brings of the time I spend there when I go to visit. So here is where I am with this. I finished the um, seahorses and then got a start on Santa's. This is Santa's sleigh, but it, it looks like a, the hull, the base, the body of an old schooner. Um, so that one's also lots of fun to work on. I like the way that she uses her colors. <laughs> which is my way of saying there's not a lot of confetti in there <laughs> it's just there's gonna be a solid color for a while you can take a little break and go okay just just stitch and she uses DMC colors a lot so there's solids and you can really travel with those all right so I think that's all for progress that's um, no finishes that's my progress which brings me to haul and I have not ordered a lot I've ordered some um, in the last few days, mostly because one of you showed a piece that you finished. It's from the Crosswings collection of Biscor News. And I went, that has to happen. I'm such a bird nut. And my whole garden, I don't have indoor pets. All of my attention, money, goes into getting my garden to be a place where the wildlings can live and I have a lot of birds and so when I saw this person use the chipping sparrow I think it was called um, crossed wing they call them the b-score nest patterns um, I had to go track them down and it turned out there were four of them and so I and I bought all four of them I'm really excited to start them um, I'm not going to do the fobs. I think I'm just going to do the nests. And 
And toward that end, I haven't collected colors. This is the first one that was delivered and I have not collected colors for it yet, but I did run over to 123 Stitch and order a piece of murky Ida, 14 count Ida um, to do them on. They're full coverage, front, top and bottom are full coverage. So you're not gonna see a lot of the fabric, um, but I make some mistakes, and if I'm gonna, if any other fabric's gonna show, I would really on my hair. I would really like it to kind of go with the nest colors. Um, this I bought from Jen Stitching Niche, and as usual, it was there. She, I sent the order in through Etsy. I got my email confirmation of the order and my notification that it was packed and shipped on the same day, and I had it one day for trans trans I want to say transfer transport one day of transport happened and it was delivered on day three um, so she's just fantastic about that so that was one of my purchases and then this just came today from the double cross stitcher and I know that this is one of the other four maybe even two of the other four of these these four nests that I ordered. So I'm gonna make my way into this. I haven't opened it yet to see what it is, but I do I do know what I ordered this week and I recognize that name. I thought that was a clever um, clever shop name. The cardinal, we don't have cardinals here in Southern California. We're out of their range, but I need someone to do a goldfinch because they have what I have. Yes, so we do have ruby-throated hummingbirds. So this is the one that I ordered for her from her. And I ordered them all on the same day and hers um, just came today. So that just added one more day to it. They're really interesting patterns. Um, so this part of the nest is stitched, but right on the top of it are little um, threads that are couched onto the top of the nest. And um, that gives it that look of, of it gives it the dimension the third dimension and that look of nests where they've kind of woven in um, little things they find laying around for their nests and then i also have the things from and it's a whole nother story for a different time but i have a collection of tiny feathers that i've collected from around my yard over the years and i saw on Pinterest years ago, a beautiful nest, embroidered nest similar to these, and they'd worked in a tiny feather. And I said, gosh, you know, I wonder where you get a tiny feather like that. I'd love to do that. And immediately started finding them all over my yard. So um, asking it is given. Um, and so I'm going to try to work those into um, at least one, if not more, of these these wonderful charts. So I'm excited about those. And did I already say I put in an order to one, two, three stitch to get a piece of murky? Yes, I think I said that already. It's not here yet. This also came today and I haven't opened it yet. It is from the Fat Quarter Shop. And I've been waiting for this for quite a while. Um, and I don't know, it's a rogue set to see what's actually in it. I ordered the monthly, I think it's monthly, the Mistletoe Lane kit. I had tried to order Feels Like Home several months ago, and I couldn't get the site to cooperate with me. And, and I did manage to get the membership and get the patterns for Feels Like Home. I could never get the flosses. I could never order them. Um, and it seems that, the issue was if you if you join the sal and order the flosses at the same time everything works fine 
but if you join the cell and then try to go back to get the flosses, that's where I had an issue. So I never did get the flosses and I never did do that piece, which was okay because when I started seeing other people doing it, I didn't like it so much. So I said, okay, well, it's okay that I didn't do that. Then this one came along, the uh, mistletoe lane. And I said, oh, I'm glad I didn't do that other one because this one looks right more up my alley. Um, and I did order the pattern and I did order the flosses and they're just now getting here. And of course they've already started there. And I ordered them the day it, it posted. So it's not like I really wasted any time. Um, but here they are. These are Weeks Dye Works. They're very pretty. What a pretty, pretty piece that's going to be. But I'm behind on it now. What's in here? Whitewash. Sky. Americana. Envy. Ooh. How about that for a green color? This should be on a white background. What color is the back of this? paper. I need to make a board. So green and be green. It still doesn't really show up. This isn't the best time to make these videos for me. They give me two of them. They did. There must be a lot of green on this one. Um, but it's the time I have today. It's about three o'clock here. Liberty Red two, three of those. It's very, to me, that's Christmas. I love these bright, bright colors for Christmas. And then there's two called Sophia's Pink. And I'm loving these colors. And Meadow Green. It's interesting, that's the color. That's the name of the color on my walls <laughs> in my bedroom and crepe myrtle, my mother's favorite tree. So cool. I'll, after this, maybe I'll go and see if I can find a, an appropriate piece of fabric and uh, that I could do this, get started on this. So that's cool. And then I also bought some self stick boards. This is the fault of Priscilla and Chelsea who use these all the time. I gave up using them 20 years ago because I was worried about the discoloration of the adhesive bleeding through the fabric. Um, and maybe there's been some of that on the ones I've used. I'd have to go back and look. But um, yeah. Um, this is this is good to know. This is a, a card from Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop. And she says, and I think she probably speaks for a lot of small shop owners and some big shop owners as well. She says, please excuse our packaging at this time. It is not up to our normal standards. Due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, we are on a limited staff and we wanted to get your order to you as quickly as possible. Hope you are staying safe and healthy. We apologize for this inconvenience. So they're not taking the time to pack things because they don't have the staff to do that. And I think that's true of a lot of the shops now. They just don't have the staff to do that. All right, that and that and that. Those are my channel arts. What did I just do with them? This is really, oh, here we go. I put them over here. All right. And then something else that I got, a couple of other things I got. I, I did the Friday night fight night for Be Stitch Me. I'm addicted now to Be Stitch Me. And I got um, Spectrum is the one that I won. And then after this, the ones that I didn't win and then the ones that I'd seen before that didn't show up again, I talked to her. And what she does is she kind of keeps track of custom orders. She doesn't charge you any more for them than she does if you do it on one of the, the Facebook sales. She just kind of waits until she has enough people to make it worthwhile to dye it and then has a, a known, she knows that she has a sale. She does 
Um, you do pay the invoice before she starts the dye job, but that's okay. I am happy with that. So I ordered three fabrics from her um, straight away like that. And then the last piece of haul, oh no, there's another piece of haul. I ordered this pattern. Um, the person who did it that inspired me, I even want to say she did it on a peachy pink fabric and used all peachy pinks. She subbed out a lot of the colors so that this came across as being very pink. And I'm going to have to go find that. I don't even remember who did that, but that's what I fell in love with. So when it came and it didn't look like that, I said, I don't want this one. I want the pink one. I want the one that's all pink. There is a lot of pink in here, so maybe if I just put it on a piece of pink fabric, it'll come across like hers did. Um, and then I have, I signed up for Victorian, Moti Victorian Motto Sampler Shop monthly uh, flosses, the six pieces of floss. Um, what a deal. Oh my gosh, these are huge. And it was kind of funny because I opened the bag here in this room at dusk. And I took the colors out of the bag and I went, well, these are disappointing. When I signed up, we had the conversation. In fact, Nancy um, used to live here in my town, so we had that conversation. And um, I told her, well, I... I am new to you and um, I, I all I can tell you is that I like saturated colors and I like variegation and she said well then you might be happy with my um, limited edition collection I said let's go for it I uh, trust your judgment so they came and in the dusk light in here they were like bleh and I went oh how disappointing then I was watching, so that was like on Friday of last week. Then on Saturday, I was watching Sunshine, Sunshine Stitchers. And EJ, I love EJ. EJ is such an inspiration to me and such a support to me. I don't, I'm sure she's not even aware that I exist. But um, I love the way she just keeps plugging along because that's what I have to do. I, even though I'm retired, I'm not, I don't have the luxury right now of just sitting down for a day and, and doing nothing but cross stitching or even for several hours. I've got that seven to 10, seven to nine, seven to 10 window in, e in the evening where I stitch. And um, it can be a slow go sometimes. And EJ, she's still working and she's still teaching. I was a teacher. I know what it's like to have that load that it's always on your mind and you always have some other little thing to do or big thing to do. I don't, not sure. I don't know what, I believe she teaches math. I don't know what level I don't, I'm guessing secondary, but I don't know if she's in a big school or a small school or a special school. I don't know where she is. Um, but I remember, I remember what it's like to have that load. So anyway, so she really inspires me and she got the same collection I did and her reaction was totally different. She was, oh my gosh, look at this variegation. You are totally rocking this, Nancy. And I, remembering back to my package and I'm like, I don't think I got the same thing. So EJ finished her presentation and then I came back out the next morning and opened this up again. And now I'm in that position of, oh my gosh. Yes, look at these, look at the variegation on these and look at these luscious colors. It was just the light. Just the light in my kitchen didn't show them to advantage. So thank you, Nancy. I'm loving the limited edition that you sent me, the colors, and look forward to being part of your monthly for quite a while. So this one is called Seaside Blues. This one is Country Lime. This one is Spring Azalea. I am a sucker for pinks. This one is bittersweet. It's a lovely brown. I could have used that for my boxes, huh? On the uh, shores of Hawk Run Hollow. And then the two that blow me away. 
This one is called Sunspots. It's a little too dark for where I'm working on Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, unfortunately, because I would have loved to have used it. But isn't that beautiful? Yeah, these are DMC based, so these are cottons. And then this one is called Love Me Red. And I don't know if you can see, the variegation in this is the color. This is so sad. I have to get a board. The variegation on here is stunning. No, that's not going to show it off. So I'm going to, because this isn't fair. This isn't fair to Nancy. Um, I'm going to get a. I'm going to set up a board for next next week, hour in two weeks, whenever I get back for my next floss tube, and reshow these because they're just not showing here very well, and that's too bad because they are gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Okay, so where I stand in all other business right now, I am. I have a little house. It has three bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, two bathrooms, and a family room. The living room is becoming a entertainment room. It actually, the living room became a bedroom 25 years ago, 35 years ago. And it has a giant king size bed in it. So that king size bed is going to come out of that living room and that living room is going to change function into an entertainment cent entertainment room that can double up as a guest bedroom. The bed that is in that room is going to get transferred to a back bedroom which is a um, going to be a guest also going to be a guest room. A formal guest room and as part of that happening what had to happen in here is that my sewing room which is the third bedroom so I, I live in one bedroom my sewing room is another bedroom and then the um, I'm gonna make a guest bedroom out of the third bedroom for actual guests and that's where the big bed's going to go. But it, it, it's, it's a domino thing where really everything has to happen at once. And that has been really stressful for me. So I've gotten more into it. I've gotten a start. Things are moving ahead on all of it. And all of that progress is going to go into a different playlist. I only mention it here because I'm going to use my... Floss tubers privilege here. I have noticed some of the floss tubers I love to follow, um, and I think it's probably true across the board. We don't just do cross stitch, do we? We do lots of different things and have done lots of different things over our lifetimes. And some of those things are starting to creep into people's floss tube presentations. For example, I've been watching. Um, uh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy has been sharing her knitting project that she's been doing as has Caroline Off the Grid Needle Arts has been showing her knitting project that she's been working on and is very excited about. I watch Anna from um, Stitch Roadies and I watch her on Quilt Roadies which is where she started doing um, YouTube videos. Um, because I'm also a quilter. I don't knit. My mother did, does knit, but I don't. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy seeing what they're doing because I'm interested in the people's lives and I like to see the things that they do with their days. I like being invited into their lives and seeing what they're up to. So I'm going to um, use that example to share something that I have come across in this whirlwind of a of a house change that I'm making. I'm um, 
But at any rate, um, as I've been doing this, as I'm digging, one of the things that has to happen is that I had to move all of my fabric storage in my sewing room so that it would be stored more efficiently and I'm having to purge it and I'm doing that and as I go through all this stuff I keep finding things and things that have not been in the forefront of my mind for a very long time. And one of the things that I found that I wanted to use my prerogative as a, a YouTube channel creator is to share this quilt that I found. Um, this is a pattern by Kim Goodrich, Once Upon a Vine, copyright 1999, and I made this quilt, and I found it. It is not finished yet. It still needs the quilting, and it still needs to be bound. Um, and I would like to take you back to where it's laid out in my bedroom and take you on a little tour of this quilt. Okay, so this is the quilt that I found. Um, and I was just going to share the embroidery pretty briefly here on Floss Tube because it's Floss, right? So it's a, a pattern that I bought called Once by Kim Goodrich in stitches at Once Upon a Vine is the name of the pattern and it was copyrighted in 1999 um, and it has the 12 months here so January has the pelican with the snowman and one of the things I really enjoyed about this is that it incorporated things like applique so on him on the um, penguin his wings are applique and then it uh, included cute little buttons. So the little um, carrot button, for example, on the snowman's nose. And I don't remember if I bought that one or made that one. I have a feeling I bought it though. Um, February for Valentine's Day, the hearts are the applique. March has the um, kite and these little bows are applique and then I found little round buttons to use for it. April is Easter, the chick is the applique, and again I was able to find these cute little, just little pastel buttons that kind of give the feel of Easter eggs. Um, May, May flowers, I love these little flower shaped buttons that you can get at Joanne, and I am addicted to them, but I was just so happy to finally have a project I could use them on. Uh, what did I say, April, May, June, cabin in the woods um, and this again we had our essentially our cabin in the woods was a luxury condominium up in the up in the Rockies but we did have moose and we occasionally saw them and so when I found this moose button I decided he had to go here I found some star shaped buttons for the sky and the applique was um, the heart on the cabin July home of the brave the star here is the applique and the button is the hole in the birdhouse. Um, August, I have the applique watermelon, and then I did make these little watermelon seed buttons. And they're not really going to show up here in this. There we go. Um, I made them out of Fimo after I worked. Um, worked enough with the other buttons to kind of figure out how, maybe how they did that. <laughs> And I believe this button, I, this button and this button, um, I believe came out of my grandma's button jar. Um, and my grandma died when I was three. And so my mother had custody of her button jar. And so they're really kind of precious to me for that reason. Um, September for school, so that was August. September for school starting. A couple of appliques here to do that. October is Halloween, the applique is the pumpkin, the button is the bat, the turkey for November, again the pumpkin is the applique. These are just, I fused them on and used a buttonhole to still stitch around them. And then cr finally for Christmas, Santa in the Christmas ornament with a star. 
um, being the applique and the button being the tassel or the decoration on his hat here. Um, I used mostly fabrics. Um, I used a lot of fabrics, to put it that way, by an artist designer named Sandy Gervais who right now has gone in a kind of a different direction. You can kind of still see the style in her new stuff, but um, it's, it's lime greens and much more contemporary, a little bigger look than what she had at the time she was doing this. And I loved her fabric. I still do. Um, I still have a lot of it. Um, I remember buying the pattern for this, this um, in stitches pattern, Once Upon a Vine by Kim Goodrich, at Corn Wagon Quilts in Utah. And that's also where I bought most of my Sandy Gervais fabric. So this is Sandy Gervais. This is for sure, um, pretty sure that this is probably, and I'm sure that this is. Is there another one in here I'm really sure of? I think this one was as well. And then, um, well, this one in here and here. And then there's some maybes in here. I think this one might have been hers. This one might have been hers. The firecrackers. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Maybe the pumpkins, maybe this line. This line might have been hers as well. Not sure about that. Um, yeah, these Christmas trees. I'm pretty sure this was her line, too. So anyway, oh, and little sheep. I think they were hers as well. any rate, um, I love this quilt. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know that I'm going to have wall space for it. Um, and I haven't decided if I'm just going to quilt it or if I'm going to maybe, instead of quilting it, do some embroidery along these edges. Um, no rush, because because like I said, I don't know where I'm going to hang it. I don't have wall space for it. Um, but I loved doing it. I love the quilt, and I really would love to finish it and get it up on the wall. This is the background of it. This was also another Sandy Gervais print. So I can get it to where it's right side up. Take a little, take a little e-ticket ride here with me. There you go. Such a fun project. So yeah, I loved doing that quilt. I don't know where I'm going to hang it. Um, and so I'm not in a hurry to finish it. But I was really, I don't know, you find these things and you go, how could I have forgotten I did that? Man, that was fun. So that's, um, I, I went on a little... Um, it's a word I want on a little hunt for Kim Goodrich and I did not find her I can find the pattern in um, on eBay and in Etsy stores sometimes will offer it but I don't find anything new so I don't even know if she's still with us or not it's been 20 years um, so that's it for today and um, like I said I I'm move I'm going to be pulling together <clears throat> excuse me most of my time and energy is going into the house projects and I'm I am recording my progress on the house and I'm going to this evening I'm going to edit this one first and try to get it ready to upload overnight and then I but I'm also going to edit this evening um um, my mind wandered. <laughs> the house progress ones, the garden progress ones, and then some things for my Disney playlist. If you are a Disney fan, Grandma's Disney stuff might be fun to look at. Um, it has my very first YouTube video is up there, and it's a Disney one on Disney opening box opening of me with my Disneyland train, and it is. It's a Lego train, and it's not good. It's terrible. 
<laughs> it was so bad. I, I edited, it was my first editing job and my first attempt to load something onto YouTube and I finally watched it. And what I was doing, everything in the box came in a cellophane bag and I was holding it up like this and it was crinkling and it drove me insane. So what I did was go back and re-record it without the crinkly stuff. So there are two of them. So you could take a look at that. There's a piece about Tanabata days at Tokyo Disney that I think turned out really well. And it, it tells a little bit about the story of Hikoboshi and Orihime and what the festival is all about and how they celebrated it at Tokyo Disneyland. And then there's a merchandise hall at the end of it. And then I have this great big box over here. There are actually two boxes here, full of Disney things that have been coming in gradually during COVID. In fact, I have two shipments from the Tokyo Kawaii Club that I just love um, that came in on the same day. They've been in a sea container, in a container on the ocean for who knows how long because it, they come from Tokyo and um, Tokyo, Japan shut off international air, air mail for par parcels earlier in, early in COVID. So they've been, you know, truly taking a slow boat to the Americas from Japan. So I have quite a bit there. I'm, I'm waiting until um, something comes in from my person. I have two personal shoppers that I work with, Michael Donahoe, who does Tokyo Kawaii Club in Japan, and um, Karen from Karen's USA Adventures, who shops Primark in the United Kingdom for us. And I have a shipment coming from Karen. She's already sent it. And her stuff comes pretty quickly. So as soon as it gets here, I'm going to do a big opening, a big haul opening for my Disney playlist on Grandma's World. So that said, um, I'll keep you posted, but um, thanks for stopping by to see what I'm what I did the last couple of weeks. I think I posted one a week ago, but it was from June 27th. Uh, and it's things have just been kind of busy around here. Um, stay well, mask up and wash your hands. And we'll see you next time. Bye.